Bridges are stronger when built from both sides. Let's connect. Let's connect. In, In the middle. middle. Hello and welcome to Building Bridges, a show on the Greensboro Television Network that highlights ways members of the public and the Greensboro Police Department can come together. I'm your host, Sandra Hughes, and we're glad to have with us today, we're honored to have with us today, some people that you probably already know. First of all, sitting next to me is Mayor Nancy Vaughn. Next to her is Police Chief Wayne Scott, and then we have Councilwoman Mary Abuzawader, and we also have Councilman Justin Outling. So it's welcome to you all. I tell you, you're all it's famous people. I don't know what to, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get in trouble today or yeah. not. But today we're going to have some candid conversation about the Greensboro Police Department, your police department. We'll look at some of the challenges and some of the successes from twenty sixteen. Across the US law enforcement has been in the spotlight an awful lot this year and some of the things we didn't necessarily want to see. We had national discussions about body camera footage, use of force, protest, and shooting of police officers, among other things. And we'd like to talk about some of those issues today and how they might affect Greensboro, if at all. So Mayor, I'll start with you. And, and I just gave a long list of things that unfortunately we've had to listen to. Um, so from your standpoint, how are we doing? Well, I would say that we are definitely part of the national discussion. We have had quite a few um, discussions about body-worn cameras. Justin helped put together a policy, which is really the first policy in the state. We released two videos this year. I don't know that there's any other city that released two videos. We are looking- What two? What were they? The Vo video and the um, Cole Yors video mm -hmm. um, on body-worn cameras. Mm -hmm. We. Um, certainly have been releasing as much documentation as we possibly can. We know that the community is looking for a higher level of accountability from us and from our police department, and I think we're headed in that direction. Well, from your standpoint, I mean, you're sitting on top of all of the, the other police officers, so to speak. What's the thing that bothers you the most about what we have been able to do or, or haven't been able to do? Well, and, and kind of as the mayor said, you know, I'm very proud. I'll, I'll always start on the positive side. I'm very proud of the fact that Greensboro has been the first in a lot of things. We were first to actually get body cameras in the state. Mm -hmm. We were first to, to make headway on these policies that we discussed with the help of council. What frustrates me around it is sometimes that our, our state legislative body uh, kind of lags behind. When we talk about digital evidence, we talk about the decisions around uh, releasing it, and um, I think we can get better at that. And, and that's probably the most frustrating thing We've made good progress. Uh, as the mayor said, here locally, we were able to do some things, and I'm proud that we're leading in that area. But um, we're looked at in the law enforcement world as a leader, and, and I'd like to be able to share that more with the other uh, cities throughout the state. And we do have plenty of those throughout the state, don't we? Absolutely. So where does the city council <coughs> come in on what's happening in the police department, Mary Kay? Well, um, when we had our, our safety committee, we had our public safety committee, the, the public came in and discussed about um, their views on the body-worn cameras. We've opened up so many things to the community to give them a chance for input. And I highly commend the police department and city council and everyone involved in those discussions because we certainly want to make sure that the community is well aware of what we are doing by that transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, commend the department for all of their outreach, which I, I believe will get to in a little bit, but you know, they've done some amazing things the last couple of years, the neighborhood oriented policing, um, all of the outreach activities they do in the community, the community engagement office, which has gone to almost every uh, association, neighborhood association in the community to get their input. What can we do to make things better for the community and the police as well. And I'm sure a lot of people are looking to the council and saying, do something about this. They don't go to the police department, they come to you. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I've, I've been on council about a year and a half now. And I think something that I've come to appreciate is that oftentimes creating change is much like trying to turn around an ocean liner. <laughs> that's but, right. Uh, really, this council, as well as the police, have really been leaders on these issues. 
And speaking to a point Mary Kay raised, you know, I think one thing that's become apparent is that progress moves at the speed of trust. And I think what's impressed me the most with this city council as well as the police department and the fine men and women in our police force is they're committed to creating that atmosphere of trust that's going to move us forward. Mm -hmm. So this year is the adoption of the first body-worn camera policy in the state, providing for release of body-worn camera footage publicly. It's the police showing real leadership with city council in adopting a policy that prohibits racial profiling. Mm -hmm. We're one of the few cities really in the country that actually prohibits these things. It's neighborhood-oriented policing. So we have a lot of progress still to make, but when you look at the past year, year and a half, two years, there's been a tremendous amount of work done by the city council and the police, and we're well positioned to turn around the ocean liner, build more trust, and uh, see more progress. I talked to a police officer one day in this show, and, and he stood up and he had on, Chief Scott, every kind of thing I could imagine, cameras, all things around his belt. and. Right. Um, body armor and right. how in the world do they, do they get around with all that stuff? All of it together is close to 35 pounds. Oh, I, I, it's, I it's, felt it's some of it. It's heavy. But you know, it's, it's, it's important to us that we give our officers everything that can protect them, make them do their job right. And the city's been very supportive of us to do that. But you're right, it's a fine balance. Mm. Probably the officer, I think I know which one you're talking about, was about my size. Imagine when we have a smaller framed officer. It gets even more and more difficult, but, mm -hmm. but you know, we manage, and, um, and they're grateful to have those tools available to them. Policing is so much different than it was when I started 25, 26 years ago, so you got to have all those different little instruments, and, and the body camera is a great example of that, where three plus years ago when we started it, folks were reluctant, as anybody would be. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say overwhelmingly, my officers would kick and scream if I tried to take them off of them. So it's, it's a great thing to see that. It is great. <clears throat> and, and I'm just thinking if I wanted to be a police officer right now, I don't know if I could walk around with all that, <laughs> that stuff on. How are you liking what you're seeing with the body cameras since that's the topic now? Um, you know, I have been very supportive of the body cameras since they first came about. I am frustrated that we can't release the videos as easily as we would like to. Um, I think it is good for the police officers and I think it's good for the community to be able to have that transparency. What we are able to do with these videos is largely determined by the state legislature and technology has gotten light years ahead of the ordinances. Mm -hmm. So I know that the, the chief and uh, the city attorney, Tom Carruthers, has been working with Representative Faircloth. We, we crafted a policy. We would like to see something different than what the legislature ultimately passed, but we believe that in the long session that they will come back and tweak it because it's frustrating to have all these videos and not be able to release them. Well, then what do you do with them if you've got them? Well, uh, I think a fair point to say also is <clears throat> GPD has had two requests that, that, that may, makes them comport with the law. Mm -hmm. We have actually been in favor of both of those, and we've mm -hmm. been successful going to the Superior Court on two occasions in the last two weeks mm -hmm. where we've gotten videos released. So I want to dispel that myth that they can't get out, because they can't, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question, we actually record between 80 and 100 hours of video a day. A day? A day. Wow. And we, wow. we record that and we put it in a cloud-based system. And I had to educate myself what that is. So if you can imagine, social media is usually kept in a cloud-based system. And then that's part of the expense. And, you know, council's been very uh, strong to support us to understand this technology cost, and we appreciate that. But we manage it and then we, we basically keep it uh, in, in different buckets depending on what it represents. If it's criminal, it goes to a criminal file. If it's internal, it goes there. If it's, if it's an officer, uh, one of the most common videos we put out was when we had a bear in town, if you all remember that. <laughs> that was yes. one of the first videos we ever released. Those actually get, um, they get destroyed after a certain amount of time meeting with state law. There's a very particular schedule. So it's a complex thing that actually requires people to manage it. Uh, but ultimately, they're there and we can access them. And, and we've been successful. Like I said, GPD was the first one in Guilford County uh, on two occasions now to go before a Superior Court judge. And, and we've had a, a good rapport, and I think we're building the way there. Well, I enjoyed seeing that bear. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool, since it's something we never right. see, see anymore anyway. So when we get back to the city council, you're obviously happy with the police camera. Anything else you have in mind? Um, 
I think, as the mayor said, it, it would be uh, better for council in the city if if more could be released. You know, we mm -hmm. want to be accountable and transparent. Uh, but the problem with it, of, of course, is the state legislature putting those binders on it. Now, as the chief stated, uh, you can go to court and get them released. But that's that's really a burden for mm -hmm. some people, mm -hmm. you know, to have to go through all that. Um, are there some videos that shouldn't be released? Even when we were discussing that, yes, we, we believe so. Uh, or, or I can say that I believe so, you know, in someone's home, uh, not the best day of their life, things like that, that, that you know, uh, sexual assault victims along those lines. You know, I think we need to be very careful on what is released and what isn't released. But I think what the, the police department is doing now is very good. I know that they're saving all the videos. You know, uh, as uh, the mayor said, you know, the technology is amazing. Even from the first body-worn cameras that we purchased, I believe, Chief, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's really come a long way. And somehow we need to get the rules and procedures to come up along that way as well. I see. We're doing a show now called Building Bridges, uh, and, and here again, I said before, what we're trying to do is get the citizens and the police department to come together as one instead of, oh, he's a policeman and I'm a citizen. You know, we all have families and children and live in houses. You're new to the council, so what, are you, what, did you, what have you learned about that kind of situation, about building bridges since you've been there? Yeah, since joining council, I've learned the importance of really building trust. And it's an area in which I think the police department as well as Greensboro City Council has done a much better job than it has in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's the police getting out of the department offices, getting out of their cars, actually meeting with people, developing that trust, which I think number one helps aid our efforts in terms of reducing crime but also makes people feel better about the city in which they live but how do you make how do you make people feel better this is for all of you i mean how do you how do you keep uh, uh i'll tell you this quick story i left here one day you had given me a nice little pin that was yes. a badge and i wore it and i went in a drugstore and the gentleman behind the counter said you're the lady on tv and i said and he said oh now you're a police officer now where does this stuff come from? Uh, why are we so afraid of police? I think a lot of it is, is the national discussion. Mm -hmm. Policing is different everywhere. There are 18,000 police departments in the United wow. States. Mm -hmm. And we're one. Now, we're in the top 1% by size because of the city size we have. And I'm very proud of this department in that we make these hard discussions. There are a lot of places where the mayor and council don't sit in the same, same room and talk about the same thing and have common uh, beliefs. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the things that makes us better. But between that and, and quite honestly, television. Yes. The entertainment value around what I do for a living. Uh, if I had one half of one quarter of the percent of fun <laughs> these guys have on television, it'd be totally different. But it's but a We job. have the fights too, though. <laughs> no, no, we don't want those. <laughs> But I think uh, a lot of folks believe what they see. Uh, social media drives a lot of that. We see that fact is not necessarily the most important thing in storytelling anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, it's just, we're the, everybody wants to talk about being a police. So every time I go to a, a, a social setting, they want to hear a story. So it's, it's unique to the job. Well, and you know, I'll, I'll say that, you know, I'm out throughout the city and we all are, and we visit different neighborhoods. and. We hear a lot that they that people would like to see more police oh, yes. because they want oh. to feel safer in their community. Mm -hmm. um, so while that might be a reaction to some, they're really I think people all over this city Absolutely. who like to see the visibility of the police that it makes them feel safe. We know that some neighborhoods are more challenged than others, and they want to see a strong police presence, and everybody has the right to feel safe in their own home, their own neighborhoods, going to the grocery store, pumping gas, and you know, that's what our goal is, to make everybody feel comfortable in their own neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. It's seeing the conduct and really building that trust. And I think it's a situation where it's a, your actions speak so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. And I think for this police department in this city, over the course of the past several years, the actions have been consistent with the fact that we want to build the trust, we mm -hmm. want to have the progress. Because it's no small feat to pass the first policy allowing for the release of body-worn camera footage in the state, mm -hmm. notwithstanding the difficulties of state law. Wow. It's no small feat to adopt a policy that prohibits racial profiling. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that this police department walks the walk, not only talks the talk, 
because they're working hard to figure out solutions to these issues such that they build the trust and we have the progress and we have ultimately that community we all want to live in. And I think too, uh, very early on, the community of off uh, the community office of engagement with the police department went out into the community centers and invited uh, the residents who had concerns, you know, bringing them to the table. And it wasn't like the police were uh, demanding what was going to be on the agenda. Mm -hmm. We had community members come and voice and really voice their concerns, so that the the office could take it back to the chief. Mm -hmm and the police officers, how can we work together? Mm -hmm. How can we work together to solve your concerns, your issues? And I believe that's come a long way. Well, you know, the um, shows that we see on TV, the ones that are, you know, scary and rough and shooting and fighting, I don't want to see that anymore. <laughs> I'd much rather see, uh, I'm, I met your officers on the motorcycles, and I just thought that was so cool. The only thing that made me unhappy was I couldn't ride it. <laughs> well, you know, this has been a very interesting conversation, and you can expect more lively discussion when we return after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Building Bridges. I'm your host, Sandra Hughes. So I want to talk more about community engagement. Throughout the time that I've been working with this program, I've talked a lot about police that are in schools and communities and all sorts of places. So, so give me some more information about this community policing. Well, and that's, that's a big question. So let, let me break it down for you. You know, every officer on, on the police department, we try to practice a neighborhood-oriented policing, the philosophy of community policing. But I think specifically before the break, we talked a lot about the Office of Community Engagement. So if, if you'll bear with me a minute, about 15 months ago, you know, we created an office uh, specifically designed to do engagement and to help the department do engagement. Uh, I, I say this a lot. You mean in engagement? What's, what's, I, I'm, I'm getting there. So okay, okay, give, all right. All right. Okay. So, so what is engagement? That's a great question. Most people and most police departments do community outreach, and so do we. Mm -hmm. How does engagement differ from outreach? And I, I, I like to answer that question a lot. Outreach is an officer going on the street and handing a sticker to a child and making that child's day. Mm -hmm. Engagement is empowering whomever we're engaging with so that we build that bridge that we all talk about. And we have a long-term uh, commitment on both sides that we're going to make our community better. And that's what that office is really designed for. The, the individuals in there do a lot of programming. They do things like um, help us with backpack drives. We had one back in August. We had 12,000 people show up at the Coliseum. We partnered with the Mount Zion uh, Church here in town. Mm -hmm. And we have a great relationship with the church going forward. That's community engagement. And we try it at every single event. We try to do that. Recently, in December, we had Operation Yuletide, where 100 families were adopted by, by police uh, employees who, who picked them out. And we connected with people throughout the community to help us come wrap help us supply the toys and, and make Christmas for them. And that's, that's really what they do. So sometimes there's a, a bit of a confusion about their, they, they don't do outreach. You don't see our community engagement office at every meeting. They simply make that way so that every police officer and police employee can do it. So uh, it's been real successful for us. Uh, we actually got to go to Washington, D.C. last year as part of the 21st Century Policing Report. We were invited to come up and talk about engagement. So it's, it's been a, a successful endeavor by the department, and I'm just excited to see it continue to grow. So when you're doing these things, uh, like the toys for kids at Christmas mm -hmm. and all that, are you wearing uniforms? Absolutely. We do both. We do I some mean, hybrid I just uniforms. If people know who you, who you are. We do. Uh, you know, early on, I'd been the chief less than a, a month, and I had, uh, we had a meeting, and someone told me, sometimes those uniforms are intimidating. So we look to soften our image. So sometimes you'll see us in polo shirts. Uh, if it's around the Christmas parade or at the event, you'll see me in a Santa hat which are oh, still pictures on. floating around out there. There are there's still pictures <laughs> out there floating around. <laughs> but no, we, we do. We want folks to understand we're part of the police department, but equally we want people to be comfortable. That's, that's, that is what we're talking about right exactly. now, building bridges. Yes. So any other plans coming up, any other in community engagement projects coming up? Well, uh, they're, they're ongoing. And, and you know, and Mary Kay is actually a graduate alumni of our Citizens Academy. I'd like to give her a second to tell you a little bit because we're okay. about to start the 2017 Academy. Good. 
Yes, the Citizens Police Academy is another one of those ways that the community and the police department come together to build trust and build those relationships. Um, I took the academy in 2012, and I can honestly tell you, Sandra, you should sign up. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. I think I have been through it, through Leadership Greensboro. It's similar, but this is all oh, about the police. Oh, I, oh, I see. And this one, shot you do time. everything from <laughs> learn, learn about the legal, you know, what, they, what happens to them every day and how the officer's having to think about legal issues and, and all of the things in order to protect the, the person he is engaging and also himself. There are so many things that you learn in this. And one of the most wonderful things that comes out of it is the fact that we have established uh, a Greensboro Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association. Oh. And that Alumni Association is one reason that I'm so involved and uh, that I am very honored to be part of because we are able to assist the chief and the department in all of these initiatives that the police department does for community outreach engagement. Mm -hmm. um, we assist with Operation Yuletide. We go out with the officers to deliver the packages. And I have to tell you, that was one of the most heartwarming experiences in the entire time that I've been dealing with, just to see the looks on these kids' faces. You know, and, the, and then to know there's a uniformed police officer here. They're not scary. There's someone I can go to. And all of the officers involved in Operation Yuletide, they take time to speak with the youth and talk to them and, you know, what are you doing in your future? I have to tell one brief story. I went out with uh, Lieutenant Dan Knott uh, on the last Operation Yuletide, and we went into a home, and the young men, I actually have their picture on my Facebook page. They gave me permission. But one of the young men is wanting to go into the Army and or become a Greensboro police officer. Oh, I see. So Lieutenant yeah. Knott was speaking with him about, okay, this is what you want to do to decide which route you want to go, and here's my card, and please call me next week, and we'll set up an appointment to talk. So there you go, community engagement. And, you know, all you need to do is, is break that barrier. Break that barrier down. And then when that barrier is broken down, then all you have to do is listen. All you have to do is engage. All you have to do is acknowledge that, yes, I'm going to listen to the person talking to me, and I'm hoping that they will listen mm -hmm. to me as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful program, and I highly encourage everyone to take advantage of being uh, in the Citizens Police Academy. How long is it? It is, uh, well, it, it goes from, I believe, March to August, but it's only every other week for two hours. Oh, I see. Every other week. So it's 13 So even uh, weeks. if you're working, you could probably find a yes. way to, yes. to get yes. into those. That's it's a great program, and I highly encourage you. You also get to go through the scenarios of uh, shooting, uh, you know, what's it called, Chief? The, the decision-making simulator. The decision, yes. yes. And you actually have to make split second decisions and it's it's pretty terrifying if you you mean split session in scenarios where say a gunman has taken over a school Ooh. and you are there with the gun and you're having to decide who to shoot you don't know which one is the the perpetrator mm -hmm. so it, it's all of these scenarios and you feel like you're really in the room experiencing that so I commend the, the department for allowing citizens to go through those things. Oh, that's things. wonderful. Yes. That's great. Here again, the course, that I, not a course, but a day I spent with Leadership Greensboro. Mm -hmm. um, we went out to the police uh, club and that kind of thing, and, and we had, I guess, pretend guns, and I couldn't really kill anybody with it. But I made the mistake of going around the corner. The first person I saw, I shot. So. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to take this. <laughs> Maybe you need to take the academy. Maybe I've got to go to the academy, or, or he would never hire me, that's for sure. That's you know, th sure. there is something that I'd like to mention that the police department has, and it's the Safe City Summit, Safer mm -hmm. City Summit, which will be on January 31st of this year out at the Coliseum. But it will be an ongoing process for the next right. two years. Mm -hmm. and. You know, we know that violent crime is on the rise, that homicides are on the rise, and we want to have a community conversation right. about what we need to do to address these issues. We know it's not just policing, that there sure. are so many other issues, whether, you know, it, it really is everything from gangs to health care to education to housing to poverty. And so we'll be having that larger holistic discussion um, and it's something that we are going to look at over the next two years, and we would encourage people to come out and be part of the conversation. 
um, we want to involve as many people as possible, and this was something um, oh. that the Office of Community Engagement yes, is, mm -hmm. is starting. So is this like a day long? No, it is three hours long. It is from six, from six to nine on January 31st, mm -hmm. and then future meetings will be scheduled, and it'll be over a two-year period, because we know that this is something that's going to take time to, mm -hmm. to make an impact in. Yeah, I, I, you're right. Um, building bridges is something that's not going to happen overnight. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I feel that it's going to be, it's going to take council members, police officers, anybody, everybody, who believes in what this community is to get it right. I mean, do you agree with that, John? Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. It, it takes all of us in the community. And the reality is one group, one department, one set of people can't solve these issues by themselves. Mm -hmm. So it takes all of us to come together. And that's why I'm so excited about the Safer uh, City Summit and that it's gonna be a group from across the city coming together to help begin that dialogue so we can develop uh, solutions to our shared problems and figure out ways to accomplish our shared goals. How do you get them there? Well, you do get them there by doing things like this and encouraging people in the community to come out. Uh, we've been talking about it, obviously, within our own districts and our own uh, communities uh, within our larger Greensboro community. And I think it's, uh, it's something that is long overdue, but I'm especially proud that this police department uh, and this city council had enough understanding of the situation to know that it's bigger than just any one or two groups. Mm -hmm. And that if we're gonna make meaningful progress on these topics, we have to reach out, go beyond our comfort zones, build bridges, and come together and work. Mm -hmm. Anything brand new other than that that's coming up? Well, you know, we've, we've mentioned a, really a lot of things, and all that's mm -hmm. under that umbrella of engagement, mm -hmm. because that's a philosophy that we've adopted the last two years. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna continue some things, a lot of it's seasonal for us, um, we do what's called walk and talks in our communities. Traditionally, we did outreach. We used to come and walk. City Council would come mm -hmm. with us from time to time. We've taken a new flavor with that. We now invite citizens within those communities to walk with us. Yeah. And you would be amazed how that breaks down barriers. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that, that individuals would come out on the porch and have a conversation if you and I walk up because they know you. And so things as simple as that to moving all the way up to uh, the things described here, we do a series called Community Classroom. Uh, where we do one night of basically the overall Citizen Police Academy and we pick a topic. Last year uh, in the fall we did one called decision making because we know with the national conversation why do police do what they do. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to extend a few days of that in 2017 and we're building up what our next topic will be. Uh, it may be around police recruitment and training. Uh, it's, it, there's a multitude of things but it's listening to our community we bring in typically around 20 folks because we learned when we bring in 100 people, it's not the experience. Right. So we bring in about 20 or so people, and uh, it's amazing to see how many liaisons walk out of the room after just two years or two two hours with us because they have a better understanding. Well, I'll tell you, I've done several, uh, been involved in several building bridges programs, and I am I am overwhelmed with the kinds of things that you're doing that I had no idea about. I thought the police was the person you call when you got a problem at your house or in the car mm -hmm. or whatever. But you know, we've talked about police in the schools and in the communities and the, na the night out and all, all of those things. What's, what's your favorite? Oh man, I don't know that <laughs> I have a favorite. I'm gonna put you on the spot, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, National Night Out is always oh, a yes. lot of fun. Um, you know, not only it's police, fire, it's all different um, departments throughout the city. And sometimes you get to experience a lot of different, I know one year I got to ride a Segway, we've been up in a bucket truck. So, no. you know, National Night Out, besides having, you know, that one-on-one -on -one experience with city staff, there's a lot of fun things to do. And of course, the food is always great. Oh, I hear yeah. you about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite? Well, of course, I'll have to say, as I said earlier, Operation Yuletide is probably my favorite, mm -hmm. just to, to see how the community and the, um, police department, the police officers select the families because they've seen and been in those homes for one reason or another right. and they know that there's a need there so that really warms my heart and I would say second would be National Night Out. That's always a lot of fun. I, I hear that's a real yeah. big HB. Do you have one in particular that you 
not terribly original, but National Night Out. I, I think, oh, you know, goodness. obviously oftentimes when people have interactions with the police, it's not on the best of circumstances. I mean, the police are really there uh, oftentimes at people's low points in life. But National Night Out is a terrific opportunity to have great, fun community interactions with the police, and it's something that happens across our community. So we're, we have terrific experiences as a community with the police on a positive note and really developing those relationships. So, so is it just one night a year? It is. It is. It's the first Tuesday in August. Okay. And uh, we, we fell into uh, starting to celebrate this about 18 years ago. It, it actually started as a program in Chicago, and it was about taking the streets back. And it grew across the country. And here in, in North Carolina, particularly in Greensboro, we've been in the top 10 cities per capita for at least the last 10 years. We had over 100 and, 110 sites, if I remember correctly, for 2016. Oh and didn't we just win an award? We've won an award uh, about 10 years in a row. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh. I'm very proud of that. Um, and, you know, some of the things the city council talks about, it, us being a southern city. Well, you, if you're a southern city, you love to eat. The food is incredible. <laughs> I will tell you, it, it, it's difficult, but as the chief, I never turn down anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that sounds pretty good then. Well, I, I thank you all very much for talking about this, and, and I would give anything if you and your busy schedules could come together more often with me and, and talk about some mm -hmm. of the things that may be falling to the side or growing and what we need to do to make it grow. Um, and I love the fact, Chief, that you have, uh, I mean, even though these are city council people, they're citizens, Absolutely. just like everybody else. And that's what we need in order to, to make this building bridges become, we got a bridge <laughs> kind of right. program. Thank you all very much for being Thank with you. me Thank today. You. I really appreciate it. We've shared some pretty in-depth conversation on this episode of Building Bridges, and I think this discussion was very beneficial. Thank, to, thank you to each of you for being so candid in your comments and your insight has given me and I hope all of our viewers a better understanding of these very timely and relevant issues. I hope all of you watching have learned a few things today too. So thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Sandra Hughes. Be safe. This show was funded in part by the Greensboro Police Foundation, an independent nonprofit organization whose mission is to enhance Greensboro's economic strength by promoting the safest city possible for its residents, workers, and visitors through support of the Greensboro Police Department. For more information about the Greensboro Police Foundation, visit www.greensboropolicefoundation.org.